I'm here today with Rick Braddy, Internet Entrepreneur and Founder and CEO of Winningware.com, who specializes in product launches and growing online businesses. Rick has built numerous online businesses of his own. He also helps customers launch new products and websites and grow their online businesses. Prior to striking out on his own in 2008, he was formerly Chief Technology Officer and VP of Product Management and Product Marketing for Citrix Systems, Inc., a billion-dollar software company publicly traded on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Hey, Rick, how are you doing today? Very well, Dane. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. I'm always great to hear that. So while I was doing some research on your background, I found some pretty interesting things about you. So please tell us, how did you go from working on a top-secret cryptographic systems to many successful multimillion-dollar product launches in online businesses? <laughs> well, uh, I guess it's uh, showing my age. It's, uh, I guess, uh, 30 years of hard work and persistence and, you know, just one step at a time moving from uh, – kind of a technology, um, you know, engineering type background and little by little layering on sales and, uh, you know, through sales training and having my own businesses and working with sales folks and just, you know, sort of self-taught on the sales side as well as the marketing side originally. And, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I think it took a lot of work, a lot of study and a lot of persistence and, and frankly, learning from a lot of uh, really smart people that I've uh, been fortunate to be involved with. That sounds incredible. Sounds like the path to success to me. So with that being said, from your perspective, what's the difference between a successful product launch online business and an unsuccessful product launch online business? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest mistakes that, that I see people make, and, you know, I've made it myself uh, enough as well, but I think it's actually setting uh, correct business goals and objectives uh, or not up front, and, and, you know, let's back up, though. I mean, in order to sell anything, you've got to actually have a market that's typically a market that's growing and healthy as opposed to, you know, mature or declining. So you, you've got to choose the right target for your, your business and what you're launching, and then, you know, you actually have to build a product that is uh, competitive and that people want, and then, you know, properly priced, all the usual five Ps of marketing. But... um I think, you know, as far as the launch goes, it's really about setting the right realistic goals and having the right objectives of what you want to accomplish during the launch. And then sort of um, from there, uh, doing the planning and execution, just like really any other project where you need to get something done. I see a lot of people sort of backing into their launches, uh, you know, and, and we used to see a lot of times in the in sort of the professional software business, we'd see a lot of times where we spend, you know, months or even years working on a product or a product release, and there's a tendency to just throw it over the wall and expect that marketing or somebody is going to take this thing and just go launch it. And the reality is, you know, there's a ramp-up time of people's awareness in the market and, um, you know, acquiring and building relationships with partners, et cetera, that has to precede that. So I think the, one of the – biggest issues is having those relationships and establishing them early enough because when you're scrambling to try to get everything done and pull together for a launch, it's too late to try to build those relationships. So I think, you know, that's probably the biggest tip is start early and especially building your social network and your, your go-to-market network of partners. You know, that's definitely an area that I've struggled with myself and I know a lot of people struggle with that as well. So that was some very insightful information there. Now, a lot of people believe the Internet is full of these one-click solutions and magic potions for success, and I'd be the first to say that I was, I fell for the magic before, but what can you tell us about the work ethic and, and habits needed to build a successful online business? I mean, you kind of talked about it, but maybe you have a little bit more light to shed on that. Well, yeah, there's... You know, I think there's, uh, like anything, uh, nothing happens cheap, fast, or easy. Um, if you see somebody who's selling that, just run the other direction as fast as possible. I mean, there are some good tools out there for SEO and product launch and, you know, uh, doing all kinds of things, but they're, they're point products. They're not going to solve, you know, uh, every, every issue that you have that you need to be successful. So, I think you got one thing is just be careful. There is no magic potion or one-click type solutions that are going to get you all the traffic you need. It takes 
It takes work. It takes um, analysis of the results that you're getting on your site and you know, with your product and paying attention to the numbers and then making the right adjustments. You know, when every every all of us have our, our vision of what we want to accomplish when we set out to go launch something or build a new product and take it to market, and chances are, unless you've been in that market and done it before, you're probably wrong. I mean, I just hate to say it, but let's come right out and say it. You probably don't know everything that you need to do. So I think, you know, it takes going on this learning journey and not getting discouraged during the learning, the iterative learning process that's that's natural. And it's it's inherent in anything new that we do. And there's a tendency to get discouraged um, you just have to take and say, hey, I, you know, this. I tried this. It didn't work. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go study up, and I'm going to learn. I'm going to look at what the competitors are doing. I'm going to look at what – I'm going to talk to more customers. I'm going to find out what I can do differently. And you have to adjust course um, with your your plan and your strategy. So, you know, having sort of a big bang and just expecting everything to come right – you know, happen right out of the chute is, is not realistic, especially if you're, you know, new to business or – you know, like many entrepreneurs, you're doing something new and innovative. So, um, you know, I think it just it takes a lot of determination, hard work, and a willingness to take sort of the licks that happen along the way and just uh, get back up and, and go again and just have the faith uh, that you're doing the right things and that you're you're making progress towards your goals. Oh, that was incredible right there. And I, I know a lot of people will definitely find value in that bit of advice right there because I know that I do just then so can you please well, tell us well it's easy to say it's hard to do <laughs> so, yeah, exactly and that's I mean, that's actually one of the things that i learned myself is that specific piece of information right there like you like you said it's easy to say but it's another thing to actually implement it but, um, well it's 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 easy to get emotionally impacted when you you know because you tell your friends you tell your family you talk about what you're doing you're excited about it and then when things don't don't happen the way that you're expecting you know, um, you know, it's a letdown. So I think, you know, you got to, that's why I said earlier, I think it's, it's really important to set realistic goals. Like, you know, talking with, uh, some other boat management space, um, you know, getting your first affiliate is, is a, is a reasonable goal. And then, you know, after you got your first one, getting the next one and then getting, you know, getting to five and then getting to 10, you know, you can't start out saying, I want to get to a hundred. And it's not realistic. And if you did get a hundred, they probably wouldn't be any any good or any use to you because they wouldn't promote for you. So, um, you know, I think you know you just have to set really um, sort of bite-sized, digestible steps, and this and have a plan of what you're going to do in each of those steps, and then just you know maniacally focus on it until you get it done somehow. And uh, anyway, that's what works for me is just uh, kind of. Slogging through it, uh, having a plan, and then working the plan and adjusting course as I as I learn, you know, and, and uh, observe what's happening you know, along the way. Yes, I mean, I kind of like they say, you hit the nail on the head with that one. I found you via your three pillars of online success article, and I really, and the reason why I found that was because I was working with a personal client of mine, just doing some consulting with them, and they were just having a very difficult time understanding what exactly it took. Mm-hmm successful online, and by successful, I mean financially successful, profitable, things of that nature. So could you please shed some light on the, the three pillars of online sales success? Yeah, so that's a, it's a blog post that I wrote, but um, in the three pillars, think you can also think of those as like the three legs of a stool. Um, you know, if you want to sit on a stool, you want to make sure it's uh, balanced and it's not going to fall over, well, it Three legs are, for an online business are critical, and the three the three pillars are uh, traffic and having the right product and, and product marketing that happened preceded you know bringing the traffic to your site, and then having a site that and a sales process that converts. So it's really it starts with the product and having a product and having it priced and packaged and messaged and promoted, etc., in a way that is attractive, obviously, to customers, and then. Um, the second thing is when you do get visitors to your site or in front of the sales page or your product or landing page, what have you, you got to convert them. And so, you know, if you skip the, the step of optimizing and making sure your site converts well, then you can throw in a ton of money, and, and it happens every day. Google has gotten, you know, wealthy 
off of people just throwing traffic blindly at sites and products and processes that don't work. And so, um, you know, that's the one area of the three three legs that, that you know people seem to overlook for some reason. Maybe it's because they don't understand it, but it's conversion and conversion optimization and making sure that. I mean, if you just to give you an example. Um, I had a sales page years ago in a niche business that I uh, still have that um, it was it was rocking along doing okay, you know, converting one and a half, two percent. I was okay with that, but I wasn't really totally happy. And I I, uh, I listened to a course by Marlon Sanders, and he was uh, I took I bought his course and was going through it and listening to it in the car and way back and forth to work. Still had a, a real job back then, and um, I was. Um, I was learning some things, and, and he said something about images, and I, and I call them image now image amplifiers. But he talked about how you, you, if you just as a conversion tip, on on a sales page or landing page, by putting the right image that depicts that end user or visitor achieving the desired outcome that they want from your product, or you know, uh, solving the problem, or whatever it may be, um, that image just changing the image can have a, a super effect, you know, can double or triple your sales. So th this uh, particular page went from like 2% conversions to like 6%, and all I did was change the image. And <clears throat> in this case, what it was, it was a, a poker uh, training uh, ebook I was selling back in the days, you know, where everybody was, when the Texas Hold'em was first hot back in the, uh, I guess, I don't know, 2005, 2006 time frame. And what I did was added. I changed the image. I, you know, some people said, "Oh, put an attractive female or whatever that you know both both females and males like that as an image." Well, I tried that. It, it was okay. I changed it to a picture of a hand raking in a huge pile of chips, like they had just won a big pot in poker, and it tripled my conversions just like that. So, you know, I think of the three pillars, the one that's most overlooked is getting that sales process right and optimizing it and just using best practices and and, and knowing with the right analytics uh, and tools where you really stand with your conversions. Then once you've got a you know a site that's actually converting and you know you've got a product that's priced properly and that you know the market's consuming, then it's time to invest in spinning up more traffic. So those are the three pillars really is getting the product pricing promotion, the five P's of marketing right. Then getting your conversion house in order and your sales and lead generation, you know, nurturing process, getting all that working and, and sort of humming and, and converting at a predictable rate with some test traffic or some nominal amount of traffic, then you can ramp the traffic up. And it takes all three of those combined. If you skip any one of those or you miss any one of those, it's like having a, you know, a car with a, a missing piston, it's not going to go very far. If you don't put fuel in it, the traffic that's needed to drive, it's not going to go very far. So, you know, it's got to be hitting on all cylinders from a conversion standpoint, uh, and then you got to have fuel in it. So I, I look at the, the engine and the pistons and all that as like the conversion sales processes, and then the fuel is the traffic. That's, uh, that's awesome right there. So um, kind of piggy, piggybacking off of that, what are some of the tools and resources that uh online or internet entrepreneur needs to invest in to build a successful online business? Well, there's there's just lots of them. I mean, it just depends, you know, where you are, you know, whether you've got an existing product. Um, you know, the best place to start is really with the market and the customers. And um, I think actually finding existing uh, products that people are already buying and then finding ways to innovate and uh, do something better, different, segmenting the market, et cetera, and then, so the other question was what tools? Well, I mean, there's just a ton of tools. Um, you know, back to conversions, I mean, I, I built a little course called Sales CSI that's on our site, winningware.com, that basically takes people through all these conversion steps uh, and, you know, shows you what to do. The tools are cheap or free, like Google Analytics. There's just a, a ton of, of really good tools out there. Uh, I use a, a tool called Open Tracker. It's like 20 bucks a month, and I can see every visitor that comes on my website exactly what they do, what pages they see, you know, et cetera. Now, I do something called forensics backtracking where when I, when I make a sale or a lead, I'll periodically go in and uh, I'll get their IP address out of the shopping cart. I, and I know who they are because they've already you know, made a purchase, and I'll just take their IP address and go back into OpenTracker, 
plug that in and go look and see, you know, where did they come from? What source of traffic actually led to this person buying? What what content pages did they look at before they bought? What videos did they watch? What autoresponder emails uh, sent them to these pages? So I, I, I kind of go back in and do a forensics analysis of what's working and what's not um, on the site. And, um, you know, that, that just makes a huge difference. Otherwise, it's just, you know, you're just guessing with uh, if you just use a tool like Google Analytics to try to figure out what people are doing and what their behavior is before they buy. Got you on that one. And kind of going back to that question as well, I know a lot of people that I've worked with in the past, they struggle with understanding that there's actually more than one type of website. For yep. example, small, they want to have, you know, their – their pretty pictures and marquees and everything, and I go in and I tell them, like, well, you know, that's cool if that's what you want to invest in, but that's not going to be the best thing that's going to help you achieve your goals. So mm-hmm. can you kind of shed some light on the, the different types of sites or more sure, specifically? Yeah, we, yeah there, I mean, there are there are, there are a lot of different kinds of sites. Um, you know, there's, uh, gosh, I'm not sure exactly. I wasn't expecting that question. Let me think about that for a second. So, I mean, you've got... One way to think of it is you've got your money sites, where a money site would be a site where you're selling something, whether it's a single a single page sales long form sales letter or a video based sales letter or a product catalog, you know, whatever it may be. But it's somewhere where you're you're selling something. Then you've got what I would call content sites, and content sites could be your blog, it could be uh, other sites that you've built. Um, for example, in my poker uh, niche years ago, I created a free poker test, and it's still operational at PokerTester.com, but I gave away a poker skills test where basically the people would register and take this test for free. Well, I built my list, and then I have a huge list of autoresponder emails that I send to people, giving them more free information, and then you know, moving, pushing them towards my money sites, you know, my membership sites, and my other other ebook and software type sites. So. Um, yeah, there's there's uh, those types of sites. So then then there's obviously lots of other third party sites where you can get good uh, SEO juice, et cetera. You know, just by going and connecting into them and getting links back and all your social media, et cetera. But um, I don't know if I answered your question. But I mean, the 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 other way to look at this, or the other way of kind of taxonomy for sites would be, you know, there's brochure sites, there's corporate sites, there's information type sites. Then there's um, I think lead generation type sites, and some of these all get combined together into a single big site, like on a corporate site. Um, you know, if you're a smaller, um, you know, entrepreneur type person, you may want to create several different domains that are SEO optimized in terms of the domain name and the page naming and the content, and then use those as feeder sites that to then feed into you know, traffic, feed traffic, and attract it, and then feed it to your uh, uh, your money sites. I'm glad that you shared that because, like I said, a lot of times when I go in to speak with individuals, primarily independent, independent professionals or, you know, offline small businesses who who have reached out to me or I've noticed, you know, they somehow we've got connected by the, the mere fact that they wanted a website. So then, like, I go share with them these things, and it's like, oh, well, that's not what I want. And I'm like, okay, well, since you're paying for it, you're definitely going to pay for whatever you pay for, but I'm just trying to help you out. By giving you the best, the best information so that you can make the best decisions and, and ultimately, you know, have a successful business. But, like I said, yeah, they, there's a, I think there's a lot of people, especially that aren't, that are like the, I, I don't know, I hate to say the word, but they're laggards from a technology and a web and social media standpoint, or maybe just a computer, use of computers in general. They've been oh, yeah. very <laughs> successful with their, their local businesses and their traditional businesses, but, the world is pushing them away from you know, yellow pages and the offline sort of venues and more and more into social media and on the online world. And they, they have to change or they're going to die. You know, it's like it's not optional anymore. And they're starting to realize that, well, there's a tendency for people to build what I call an ego site, which is, you know, hey, I want a site that looks good and talks about me and, you know, but one of the biggest mistakes you can make is build a site that's all about you instead of about what your customers are interested in because people aren't going to stick around at all. They don't care about that. They've had enough of those sites that, you know, that's the way all the sites were built in the 1990s. And so I think, you know, 
building a site that appeals to the different buyer personas or the different types of buyers and makes it just makes it efficient and easy for them to get what they want to get done on your on your on your site that's the really the goal of a website today especially if you're selling something gotcha from your many years of experience like what do you think would be the the timeline or the start to finish time from creating a, a product launch plan to execution and and another thing too that I like to share with people just because you get a site up and running or you know you get your product up and running that that's merely the beginning. So right. can, can you talk about some of like the, the the timeline I guess you can call it maybe of the start and finish of your product launch? Well, of the launch or of the entire product life cycle? I'm not sure. Just, uh, well, I guess you can kind of talk about both. Let's first talk about the the life well, cycle and then maybe yeah. next to launch. Let's talk about the life cycle. So, I mean, you know, the life cycle, if you've got an existing product, is you, you know, from a product management standpoint, you go find out what else you need to do to your product, uh, talking to customers and surveying them and and really getting a good understanding. And, and, you know, based on support requests and based on what you see the competitors have and, you know, based on your strategy with your product, if it's a brand-new product, then, you know, you have a lot of market research up front, but then you build the product or you build the next version and then you you go out and you you look carefully at how you're going to take it to market. You know what what routes to market are you going to use? Uh, who are you going to partner with? And I think that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks for entrepreneurs is is attracting and building relationships with those who can really help them take their products to market. And then you know once you you've been doing all that in parallel with building your product because I mean the product is really I want to say 25 percent of what you need. I mean the other you know, we talked about the three pillars. So, I mean, the product's 25%. You know, the uh, the traffic's going to end up being 25%. The conversions may be 25% in your sales process and on your site. And um, you know, so what, what's the other 25%? Well, it's probably, in most the case of most entrepreneurs, it's partners and it's the relationships. Because what really makes money is on the Internet is monetizing relationships. So I think you know when you get all that right, then you're ready to launch. If you don't, if you don't have any one of those things is not in place, you're not ready to launch. And if you launch, you will fail. So you know it's, um, and, and you just have to be really objective and uh, reflect on where you really truly are. Um, an old, old old guy I used to work with uh, used to say that you know the first step of figuring out where you want to go is is uh, finding your he called it finding your butt. So like figure out where you really are. You got to be objective about where you really are. Then look at where you want to go. Then you can build a plan to get there. But if you're if you're not clear about an objective about where you really are and and what you're missing and what the gaps are, you can't build a plan to to really you know achieve what you're trying to do. That makes total sense. <laughs> Total sense. So, what are some of the things that you do to stay motivated to continuously build your businesses? Oh, you know, it's uh, it's a good question. You know, I, I guess every different people are motivated in different ways. Some are, people are motivated by money. Others are motivated by you know success and you know achieving certain things. Or others are motivated by learning or all of the above. But I think you know it's. Um, for me, I get bored easily. Um, you know, maybe I'm ADD, uh, you know, or something. But I, 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 if I accomplish something, I get bored, and you know, I have a tendency to try to move on to something else that's new. And uh, you know, so I have to sort of fight that and stay focused on on iterating and taking what I've already built and what I've already done to the next level. And not one of the dangers with internet entrepreneurs is is chasing too many uh, rabbits. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of rabbit holes you can end up down. That and you, they won't pay off, and so I think um, you know, getting the success, turning the crank, and and you know, t- seeing your business grow, taking it to the next level, is, is one of the things. Also, starting new things and working on new challenging projects with customers and seeing what they're doing, and you know, being a part of helping them uh, be successful. To me, you know, that's motivating and uh, helps me get up and you know. Uh, feel good about uh, what I'm doing every day when I'm I'm helping other people or you know growing my own business along the way. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> I definitely feel the same way as far as uh, having someone else be inspired or you know feel that I was able to help them you know achieve a goal. That's one of the things that motivates me as well. So 
we definitely see eye to eye on that one. Um, so that being said, I got a subscriber question for you. Someone okay. asked from my mailing list. They asked, "How can, now how do you use internet business as a wealth building vehicle?" So I, maybe they're asking, you know, well, what can I do to use this this internet business or this online business opportunity to, like, kind of like you're saying, get from where I am to where I want to be. Well, I mean, I think we've been talking about that this whole during this whole uh, discussion, but um, it's kind of kind of a broad question. Um, I mean, uh, making it in <laughs> boiling it down in, in business um, is really simple. It's uh, one a guy told me years ago uh, when I was looking at uh, some venture capital investments, and uh, as a venture capitalist, he saw a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, some made it, most of them didn't. And he said, you know, uh, business is not that hard. At the heart of it, you know, you, you need to bring in more than you send out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it's uh, – and, and, you know, so so keeping that in mind, you if your business is made off of transactions, you have to focus on how many times do I – can I turn the crank, okay, so to speak, and, and make a sale, generate a lead, generate 10 leads, one of them turns into sales. It's a numbers game. So you have to pay attention to the numbers and um and then invest accordingly and that that's why I was talking about earlier you know the the conversion numbers and the traffic numbers it's really at, at the end of the day a business is a number machine and if you're not paying attention to the numbers you're flying by the seat of your pants you're blind you know and you can't grow something that you can't measure so i think you know then it's a question of once you've got a machine that's working it's a question of okay how can i grow this machine and make it run make it Instead of having one crank that's turning, you know, uh, uh, once a day, I want that I want that a crank that runs better and turns three times or ten times a day, and then I want ten of those. Well, how you know you you got to get one that works, then you can start replicating it, and um, you know, and growing it and and fueling it. You know, so I think it's a question of investment, you know, based on. You know, if I can if I can dump X dollars into advertising, and you got to go beyond Google AdWords, there's just not enough search inventory to do anything really, uh, and the costs are too high typically to grow a, a good solid business. So you got to go to media beyond AdWords uh, and Facebook, and you know, so you got to kind of take it a step at a time, and um, you know, keep those three pillars in mind and just. Uh, Get a good balanced business running, and then uh, grow it, and just keep adding more cranks. I call them cranks, revenue cranks, and lead cranks. Uh, you know that that convert, and just keep turning those cranks. You know, and putting the machinery in in place that uh, brings more traffic and and boosts the conversions. And you know, if you stay focused on it, you just believe that that's gonna. If you've got a product and you got real customers that have a need, uh, and and you just do those things, you'll you'll be successful. Oh, uh, that's. That's incredible, Rick, and like I said, I definitely appreciate the time and the fantastic answers that you have to those questions. So is there anything else you'd like to add regarding online business success or product launches? No, not really. I mean, I you know, just uh, try to have fun with it, and uh, it's always, you know, um, you can get up every day and have fun being an entrepreneur and doing what you do and or sleep late, you know, some days get up, or work work into the night like I do. Uh, I seem to sometimes my schedule drifts off target. You know, <laughs> I'll end up working late at night and getting up later today like I did today. Or you could just go get a regular job, and, you know, then you're going to have to show up on time and do all that stuff. So, I mean, it's like you know, one way to get motivated is to uh, just look at your alternatives, you know, either starving or, uh, you know, having to work for the man, you know. So I think uh, we, all, uh, we all know what we'd rather be doing, but... Um, you know, it's, once you've got the skills, it's just a matter of. Be, I think every day, my, you know, my dad told me something when I was a kid growing up that, um, you know, if there's something that's important for you to accomplish, make sure you do something on it every single day. And I, I think that's really good advice. That no matter what it is, if it's important to you, whether it's losing weight or you know. Running further, and you know, if you're a runner, or you know, selling more, or generating more leads, or you know, um, catching more fish if you're a fisherman, whatever it may be, if it's important to you, try to do something if you can every day that will help you towards achieving your goals, and you'll, you know, eventually you'll get there. Fantastic. So, how can people find out more about you and the training you provide? 
Well, you know, everything we've, we're doing has been consolidated down. I used to have a lot of sites. We've consolidated everything down into one site. It's uh, winningware.com, winning, W-A-R-E.com. And, you know, you can find out more about me. My blog is there, uh, you know, et cetera. So, and I, you know, like, love to hear from people on the blog. And I'll post this, uh, this uh, discussion we're having on my blog. And, uh, yeah, so it'll be, uh, be great. Incredible. So is there anything you can offer our listeners as a free sample so they can learn more about your Winningware Quick Launch and sell CSI? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, with uh, Quick Launch, we offer a free seven-day trial. So it's, uh, you know, it's absolutely free to go jump in and uh, register and, um, you know, try it out for a week. Uh, we figure, well, you know, if we, if we give people more time than that because the product's so effective and efficient, then they'll be done with their launch and won't need us anymore. So we, we, we give people, uh, you know, a free uh, seven day one week trial and uh that's available. We also have a, a pretty good I think report, free report on the site um that takes you through a lot of the things you, you need to do to get prepared for a launch uh, and and developing your messaging and your, your unique selling proposition, things that you know entrepreneurs sometimes stumble with. We've uh, packaged up into a free report as well. Well, Rick, that sounds fantastic, and I know that you have a lot of value to offer people interested in the online business opportunity, and I appreciate the time that you've spent with me today in this discussion, and I wish you the best in your business and and everything else that goes along with that. So thank you for your time. Well, you're certainly welcome, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, to talk today and to uh, share some information for a A lot of great questions and uh, good discussion. I appreciate it, man.